Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Renee Mera. April is Autism Awareness Month, and in today's video, I'd like to share with you some of the key symptoms and signs of autism in toddlers of 18 to 24 months. Early detection will lead to early intervention so that children then with autism spectrum disorder are able to manage their symptoms much better across their lifespan. So joining me today to talk about autism spectrum disorder, I have with me Keithy Chandra. She's a special education teacher in New York State, practicing for over a decade now. She's a founder and president of Tiny Tots Therapeutic Resources, which provides resources and support to children with special needs. Thank you very much, Keithy Chandra, for joining today on Thank you for having about me. autism spectrum disorder, because I believe according to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the latest estimates are one in 44 children in the United States are identified with ASD, and it's on the rise. So the best bet is to then look at young little children. We're talking of toddlers, you know, because that's the time in early childhood, the, the features of autism are are appearing at that age. So if we are able to detect them early, it is uh, early intervention for them and therapy and support that these children with special needs need. That's true. That's true. These children, basically are autism, what we are talking about is when the children have difficulty communicating, social communication skills are not there compared to the peers. And there are behavioral challenges in these children also that we just identify and then we treat those things, targeted skills. Signs of autism, what you are talking about in early ages, yes, by the time the child is 18 months, we can just look into those signs and then detect whether or not the child has autism or does not have autism. The professionals who can diagnose this Symptoms are basically a New York State pediatric neurologist, a psychologist with a doctorate degree, or a clinical social worker. Those are the three professional services which can diagnose a child with an autism. As a teacher, when we go into homes and see the child, or if the child comes to us and we look into those, or when we screen a child for autism, Basically, we are not there to diagnose the child because we are not the people who can diagnose that. So what we look into is if the child is not responding to the name consistently, not all the, like it's not just, okay, one time he responds, so that's not just, the child should be responding to their names more often. Like if you call them, yes, they should at least have a startled a look towards the sound where the person calling may not respond in a different manner, yeah, or may not say the word yes or no at that point, but at least turn head and respond to the look at the person who's calling the name. Eye contact, that's another important aspect. When you're talking to a child, if the child is not looking at you, the child will not be able to follow you also. Third thing that you have to look, if you are pointing to an object for the child, okay, pick up that ball or you're pointing to the object and the child is not looking at your pointer at all. And the child is looking here and there, not looking what you're talking about and pointing towards, not showing interest in it. Yes, that is concern there. So it's not just one thing. It's so many points that you have to look. It's like repetitive behavior, what we call as. So repetitive behavior is a light child likes to just switch on off, turning the switch on and off and just playing with the switch without any purpose, without any reason. Just every time when they get, they climb up and start playing with the switches. Or running back and forth, running a lot of constant movement, what we call as not able to sit and focus on a play activity when you're trying to play with the child and the child is just running around, not, not focusing on an activity. Again, Tiptoe walk, walking on toes, like a child walks on toes more often than a regular child. Like when we say the child with functioning within normal limits will not all the time walk on toes. Sometimes when they have to reach for something, obviously you go on your toes. But walking on toes for no 
particular reason also is something that you should be concerned about. Echolalia, what we say is repeat, like where there's a communication delay, what does the child do is, what do you want? The child will repeat, what do you want? Instead of giving you an answer what he or she wants, they repeat the sentence. Or you, you can say, my child is saying three word phrases, but is that functional? You have to look into that part also. They have, there are child who have a lot of words, but they're not able to use that word to make the needs known, what they want, what they need. They are not able to make those requests. You have to look into those parts also. A child, other signs are where you're not able to do pretend play. You're not able to engage in a pretend play activity, feed the doll, do something like that. Some imaginative play. You're not able to engage in that. Other signs being like flapping of hands. You're flapping hands too frequently. Whenever you get excited, you start flapping hands. Then when you're playing with a car or any circular object, you're turning around and looking at the wheels instead of making broom broom and playing with the car, you're just turn, moving the car and then playing with the wheel. So appropriate play skills are not there. All these things, the challenging behavior, like throwing a tantrum, banging head mostly, most often they just try to bang their head. I don't know, they don't even get that pain or hurt when they bang their head that much. Whenever they get freaked out, that is what they throw a big tantrum and which is not very easy for parents to control also at times and parents get stressed out with that part too. So mostly these are simple, simple signs if you see I would suggest get your child evaluated, get your child tested for these. If these are all red flags that are there for the autism signs, your child is lining up the toys, flapping hands, looking, not showing interest in people, not showing interest. Even if they come to you, they don't know how to respond to you. They don't know what to say, what to do. They will just come and stand in front of you, looking at you. And so those not showing that much of interest in people, not engaging in social communication skills, not being able to do things on request. From 18 to 24 months, these are the skills that are there, should be there a little bit. That's why it's a professional to see whether or not there is a need or whether the child is on the autism spectrum or not. People would say it's a very early age. Yes, the yeah, earlier to say the that. sign starts coming up. The earlier you detect them, the earlier you look into them, and that's the best way to treat them. That's the yes. best time to treat them also. Many parents might think, oh, my child is a you know, slow learner. He or she will pick it up in a few more months. You know, maybe the vocabulary is not that strong right now, but you know, hey, it's okay. My other child was like that too. You know, my child was able to pick up more words after three years of age. So that could be one thing. Number two was, do we have all the symptoms of, of, of ASD that you talked about, whether it's repetitive behavior or whether it's a lack of, of eye contact or no eye, eye contact or flapping their hands or, uh, you know, uh, throwing Mostly, up. Most of the autistic children have all these things. All of them. them, all of all them. Of them. Okay, so yes. then that's a definitely a red flag. That's okay. definitely a red flag. If you're seeing most of them not responding, not giving you an eye contact, uh, expressive language is very low, Recep receptive is very low. Maybe your expressive is high and the receptive is low. Like receptive is how you understand things mm -hmm. and expressive is how you say the word and stuff. Those are the, for the layman's language, those are the little, little, Right. Simple way of saying, if you are not able to understand, that means that's your receptive communication skill. Sensory children issues. with autism do lack communication skills. The sensory issues are also there. Sensory issues are also there. Obviously, there are a lot of sensory issues. They respond very different to test, taste, feel, touch. They respond differently sometimes. So all those things, we all take everything into consideration. It's not just one thing that we just look into one or two things and say, oh, this is autism. No, you're trained to look into various aspects and provide them with those tools to see if, okay, they are able to function or not. Yeah. Not everybody is on the same page, that's true, but it's a big spectrum. You could be from mild to moderate, yes. severe, 
it depends. Autism is a huge spectrum and you could be anywhere on the spectrum. So some symptoms may disappear in the course of time, maybe after, let's say the toddler is 18 months right now, maybe after 24 months, the symptoms are less, less. some of the symptoms. That is why the early detection and the early intervention program is there because when we treat, we just identify certain skills like targeted skills okay the child is not responding to name so you have to teach how to make child respond to their name show signs that they are responding to their name right the communication skills which is the major major issue with most of the families where they feel that that is something or oh, what you said three-year-old in my other child didn't speak to three so he's not going to speak to three that's fine he's not going to speak to three but other symptoms, if he's showing other signs also, there could be a major, major red flag there that, okay, we have to treat this child for something. And if the services are there, why not take them? Why not get your child evaluated and just rule it out? Don't fear for those things because major part where I feel the family feels is they're afraid of coming up to learn that the child has autism. Yeah. It's very stressful, but fine. You learn techniques and learn things and then just help your child to reach his or her maximum potential. That's what we do. And this is at no cost to the family at all. I mean, in the so United States, no yeah, in the United States, early intervention. Of your immigration status, uh, services and resources are available for the child. That's true. In New York State, it is at no cost to the family. Obviously, it has a cost, but it's at no cost to the family. And in the United States, nobody asks you what your immigration status is. If you are concerned with your child's development, you may feel free to call the, you speak to your pediatrician, child's pediatrician, speak to the person and express your concerns. If not, you can call in directly for the New York Early Intervention Program. Right. New York State has, in the United States, every state has it. If you're concerned, you can call in the department in your state. They could be known as early childhood centers or whatever they may call that. But if you type in and ask for zero to three programs in your state, they, it should pop up what programs are there in your neighborhood. Okay. And I'd like to emphasize here, this is not a disease. It's a neurodevelopmental condition. And there should be no stigma because a lot of, you know, minority communities start thinking um, what has happened that, you know, what am I, what's the community going to say? So this video, this whole interview that I'm having with Katie Chandra is all about destigmatizing autism spectrum disorder and creating community awareness so that if you feel that your child or someone else's child has these symptoms and these signs, please do get the child evaluated uh, through the professionals that keep each other just mentioned, pediatric neurologist uh, is important in this and, uh, and figure out if this child has or does it come under the ASD. So if it comes in the ASD, uh, autism spectrum disorder in the spectrum, please get early intervention. That is the most important uh, point that we are bringing out in this video. So thank you very much, Keithi Chandra, special education teacher and uh, founder and president of Tiny Tots Therapeutic Resources that provides support and resources to children with special needs. I'm Dr. Renee Mera. Thank, thank you. you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay positive. Thank you.